Welcome back to the fourth episode of my new little book, Treatments. And today I'm going to deal with this piece that's hanging out. Though I usually love for stuff to hang out of my books. This book, I want to try to keep the pages all kind of even, Stephen. So I'll be working on this little piece of fabric and I wanted to add more goodness to the back of this photograph and also I wanted to create a window on a separate page because I'm going to show you how I reinforce the window so let's get started alrighty then so, in regard to this little flap that's hanging out, I had added this uh, little hill with some French knots gone wild. I've decided I could stitch this down. That would make for an interesting... Hmm. See, I'm trying to decide right now while I'm working in front of you. That could be interesting. But what would happen if I just took my little snips and snip this here? And let's get a little well, I think that's meant to hang out. Mm, I'm still experimenting though here. So bear with me. If I make a little snip here, right where that, right where that stitching ends, see what happens. I switched it. I mean, I snipped it this way, but I need to snip it this way, too. Because I, now that I have this all sewn, this sewing stitching will resist the tearing that I'm going to do here. There. There. That's kind of cute with this hanging out. And look at how it made this pop out, these stitches here. And I like the little pop of blue hanging out. But now I got this hanging out. Usually I like to have stuff hanging out of my books, but this time I thought maybe I'd clean up the edges. And watch the stitching. Mm, that's okay, because if it comes loose, I can go back over it, make sure I'm not cutting anything else. So, there. Mm, hopefully it'll tear this way, because I'm going against the, well, it worked. If you notice, when you cut, when you rip fabric, there are, there's the weft and the warp threads. And when you do it, I think it's against the grain. It's harder to tear. In fact, it, you can't do it. You have to use scissors. So this has worked out because maybe the fabric is old or just weaker than most fabrics. It is, after all, simple muslin that I had rusted. So there's that. And I like how the little French knot gone wild kind of hangs out now. That's cool. I like it. Okay, so now we're on to this. When someone had suggested to me to add pictures and such here, I thought that was a good idea. However, you know me. I kind of do have to do it my way, <laughs> but her suggestion was very interesting. So, 
I've got this box of total scraps and whatnot from other projects. So I hardly ever throw anything away. What I'm gonna do is select the pieces I want to put in here. And I'm thinking maybe I want the fabric to show, so maybe I'll work around it. But as we get going, um, you'll see how I change because I don't, it's kind of like planning, you know, I'm telling you I'm gonna do this, but it's a loose planning. All I'm telling you is uh, working on uh, this spread and kind of an idea of what I wanna do. So let me get my water and paint brushes. Since I don't want to get any gel medium on here, I'm going to use a piece of, I believe this is called Mylar. It came from an envelope, you know, you get these uh, with uh, any kind of product or something that you order. So I'm gonna put that under here. I gotta use a silver side so that it matches this. <laughs> anyway, let's see. I'll put one on this side too, just in case. So now I'm gonna pick one piece. And I'm just gonna mm, not think, think too much about it. So, I like this little guy. He's a bowler. Mm, and I like the detail around the picture. I'm going to keep these words here because I think it adds interest to this whole thing. Mm. I don't know, I'm not sure if I want this all to be white. Well, let's paste them down, see what happens. You got my gel medium. I keep it in this container. I had bought some golden heavy gel mat, but I ran out. And I usually use um, Nova gel. Um, but I like the container, so I'm using it to hold my, my gel. <laughs> so let's do this. Let's see. I'm gonna just reach in there and see what I grab. Hmm. That's kind of an interesting word to find. And funny that I just reached in there and grabbed it out. And he's doing something physical, bowling. So maybe I'll put this up here. And there's that side looks good too, but I <laughs> like the word, so I'm going to use a word. All right. And do this. And you know what? I didn't use, I have this lotion I use that makes it a lot easier to clean my hands of paint or gel medium, and I totally forgot to put that on so I'm going to pause right here and I'll bring you the lotion the, I don't know if it's lotion it's not it's like a paste but I'll show it to you so you can see if you want to maybe try it later so this is what I used during the pandemic because I was washing my hands so much um, I use this no crack super hand cream um, it has a light scent but they also have a, a scentless one I think that's what they call it <laughs> So, look how thick this stuff is. It's like a paste. So, I like to put my fingernails in there. It does leave kind of a, it takes a while for it to dry. 
Oh, that's okay. It's worth it <laughs> to me. I hope that little tip may have helped you out. So, here we go. I still think I want to put more goodies in there. Let's see what else I come up with. And I'm not even looking. I'm just feeling the papers. What is this? Wow. This makes it interesting, too. Why not? Now, if I put the line here, that draws the eye down. So instead, I'm going to put that like so. Oh, maybe I'll have it meet up with this line in the fabric. to make sure everything is totally all right um, let's see that didn't stick all the way maybe it needs a little more So, that looks pretty good. I'm going to carefully peel this up. And see how that stuck to that. Mm. 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 Oh, maybe I'll do it on this side. And I like for the little clump. I always try to get that last bit of stuff off the inside of the the lid, but a lot of times it's kind of goopy, so he's a real deal right here. And I'm, I'm going to leave it like so. Maybe I won't leave it like so. Hmm, that's coming along. Here's a little piece of, uh... that looks like it says to me unique. Oh heck, off camera, you can't see there. So maybe I just use the word. Put it here. Let's see what else we have. Here's another little guy doing bowling. Let's put him in there too. Mm. 
It's a bowling page. I kind of like those numbers sticking out, so maybe I'll just put him up here. And this is an old illustration. That's why there's men instead of women. <laughs> Watch this, this is cool. You see how it's crinkling? Don't you just love that? That way you were put me in a book. Okay, <laughs> that enough. Okay, this is probably dry enough. Oh, I like how this is hanging out. That might be something to deal with later. So, now, make sure this is all dry. I'm going to grab a pen. It's a ultra fine point Sharpie, and hopefully it works. Oh, it does. Awesome. <laughs> and so... You don't ever want to make marks on something that has wet gel or you ruin your pen. Mm, so let's see. I tend to overdo it with uh, putting too many layers in here. And usually you want to leave a place to rest the eyes. Oop. Are you sure? I mean, these little marks that I'm making, insignificant, but look how they change the look of the, the spread. And, let's move this away. It kind of matches this goodness, even though these marks are a lot more, they're messy and just really quick. And maybe I'll do some down here. Or maybe I'll just make some marks, like so, and some asymmetric writing. And let's see, maybe I want to go with um, these lines here. So I'm just going to bring those lines out, kind of hard to draw on. dry gel. It's not the right pen for that. Let's see. I think I'll save this little area for something different. Like, I have this paper that I bought in Mexico. I think you can get it in Los Angeles. <laughs> I'm sure they have it at paper stores. Like, uh, paper stores or Blix. I'm not quite sure about that, but. Wow, this really looks cool. I like it. Kind of goes with the blue. So maybe I'll just use this here. And this is a no-no, putting your brush in the <laughs> back in the gel, but 
just for the sake of time. Scrape that underneath there. This is a stiffer piece of paper, so I want to make sure it's all perfectly glued. And then uh, I imagine that once it's dry, I will cut it. Um, yeah, because I don't want it to interfere with the word here, not alone. So, I'll just dry that really quick. Ooh. Give the whole thing a little once over. I used to use a blow dryer. In fact, sometimes I do still use a blow dryer to dry stuff. Because um, I was so used to using a blow dryer. <laughs> but heat gun works pretty good. It works fast. So maybe I'll leave just a little tiny bit there hanging out. It could be like a tab. I really like that. Hmm. Well, now that I have all that in there. There's a, uh, you know, you're going to have a, a little bit of thickness to it. But I think once, you know, you close the book and sit there for a long time with something heavy over the top, it's not going to make a difference, see? So, I'm going to put some, something down here so that I can get onto the next indicated thing. Because if I were to close this up and leave the book closed, this is obviously you know, fresh, even though it's dry, it will stick. So I'm going to put this in like this, fold it in there, keep it protected just for until it, you know, dries a little harder, like it cures. Now, uh, this stuff is really cool. I mean, it's like, let's see what happens. We pull that. Oh, heck yeah like that. Let me see. What can I do with this piece? I don't want to cover up the pink, so maybe I'm going to cover up that gray. You sure or not? Anyways, at the last minute, I'll probably do something else. Like, yeah, let's put it back, but in the opposite direction. Notice how I said I was going to put it here, and then at the last minute I decided I'm going to put it here. <laughs> well, it's the nature of the way I work. So there's that. Give that a little quick dry. I didn't think about it. Maybe this would have benefited from something under there. So for shiggles, shits and giggles, <laughs> I'm going to put that so. Yes, for now. Then we're going to get on to the next indicated. All right. So I have these two pages are glued together. So if I were to put a window here, um, it would be thick enough I probably wouldn't need to reinforce it but it would make for an interesting window so you might come back to that maybe because sometimes I tell you I'm coming back to stuff and I don't <laughs> well, let's see where would be a good place to put a window hmm. well you know here's this hole so wouldn't it be cool to put a hole here and then whatever you see through this hole from this page you will see a little snippet through this page so i'm going to grab my pencil okay so i got my pencil i don't want the window to be exactly the same size 
because I want what is whatever's underneath to show through a little bit and I'll show you what, what I'm talking about I'm gonna follow the lines of the hole maybe I'll change that to this I don't know we'll see and then I could use an exacto blade but I'm real lazy to go get it that's the nature of the thing you know I mean usually we like have everything I need here to totally be ready to show you but then I changed my mind at the last minute <laughs> all right so here we go I'm gonna err on the side of caution and maybe cut inside that line for now I could always come back and detail a little detail cut it a little more with my exacto see how that hole <laughs> wow see how that color pops through there i like that i mean yeah and there see how that adds more interest and i think i'll even leave the pencil line there okay so now I think I'm going to reinforce it from this side just to create more interest here because I want this to show through here. Although, you know what? Let's let's do it on this side. Let me pick pick something. I'm just going to do it right here next to the the hole. Not sure. Hmm. Need some more. Need a little tiny piece. It probably would have been good to put some of that mylar under here. I don't think it went through though. It's not a big deal if it sticks, but until I decide if I want it to stick, <laughs> I'm going to leave it like so. Here's some fabric. Oh, she has a mask. I can glue that down with... Good thing about fabric is it's porous, so you can go over the top and it's going to be reinforced because of the between the little squares that make up fabric that are created by the weft and the warp. She may have gotten a little bit uh, discombobulated, but after everything dries, then I can come back in and retouch up. Oh, look it. That looks like a mouth. So what we're going to do is we're going to move it over. It also could be an eye, but how, how, how opportunistic is that, huh? Oh. Yeah, it's hard to do when it's wet. I should have cut it before using it because now it's going to hang over my. Oops. Maybe that wrinkle there kind of adds interest.
I'm going to have extra stuff on my brush. I like to just put it in the book instead of dumping it into my water right away. So we'll give this a little dry. It's not perfect. I think her mouth is a little too lower, considering her head was actually uh, cast down a little bit. I'm looking down. All of that can be rearranged after after it dries with pencil or pen. Yeah, it didn't even show through. Mm, look at that. I like making windows where everything kind of shows through. Ooh, I like that pop of yellow. I'm almost like tempted to make another window since I got this window here. So what I want to do is I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to use my Sharpie. Since we got black there, I don't think that the, I don't think that the uh, pencil will show through as well. Mm -hmm. I could just go along with the tip of my snips. It's a little sharper than the big scissors. Okay. And very carefully, I am going to punch that through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see where the hole is. Mm-hmm. Just to make sure, I'm going to close the page. Maybe that'll be a better way to address it. And see, I kind of like this black showing through. But I also like the string showing through. Look at that. It's cool. It's like these layers of pages with windows that actually leave space in the, in between. I like that. Let's see what it looks like from the other side. Then every time you turn a page, you're going to get a different view from those windows and it affects the entire spread. You see how you see some through? I almost think it would be good to... Mm. There it is. Maybe I'll leave those snippets like that. You see, that kind of is interesting because the little folded goodness here mm -hmm. is raised up and you see that. That's interesting. So this, maybe I could cut that a little bigger. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. I'm not going to worry about that right now because I can always go back in. And so, on to the next indicator. Let's see, what did I say? I said I was going to do this, and I did this. And now I'm thinking, oh, oh yeah, reinforcing the holes. And see, I use that to reinforce the this page. I use this text from a page, and then I have this piece of fabric. And I'm not going to have any trouble with this tearing, but I did leave this here, so I'm going to find something to put there. I have this little piece of fabric. Oh, that's the one that I cut off of the edge there. It would be cool to have that little black threaded stuff here. Oh, 
cut them. I could have left those threads for something else, but I don't know if I want that here or here. And of course, I'll cut this back leg. A fan of that. Oh, what about this leftover piece of paper? Oh, this stuff is really strong. Mm, let's try that. Use this brush, a little smaller brush. Oh, I think I like the bluer part better. It's a little, it's a little bit brash, and I think I like these colors here. Kind of go with the, the rusty, the rusty page, or fabric actually. And let's do this one. Make sure there's enough gel on here to um, be able to glue it down. Let's put it right there. Mm. I'm gonna make sure I'm on camera so you can see what I'm doing. I'm not sure if I want to use the whole thing. So I'm gonna leave it like that for now. So I can determine it another time. That's what I want to do. I'm just going to use up this gel here so I don't put it in my water. And why put it in the water and have it go down the drain? I'm going to give that a little dry. That looks like a mouth for her, but then I see that it could possibly be a face. There's a, a face there that I see. So there's the eye. And I could put another eye over here. That's kind of weird, but kind of cool. <laughs> I just want to make sure that everything kind of lines up. Mm, that's how you can put windows in, and that really adds a lot of interest, is having all those windows, because it adds so much difference to the each spread. And this background looks a lot like this here. So I'm thinking, what can I put here to really contrast all of this good stuff instead of this looking like part of the page? So, hmm, I see this little bit of red, red, oh, it's red fabric. Well, uh, let's see. Mm, definitely add something, wouldn't it? Or the back of this. Hmm. That's gonna take some, wow, look at this. We got lines here and the lines of this fabric, the pattern are showing through and put this behind here so you can get a better look at how it's gonna look. Yeah, isn't that interesting? What if I put it upside down? Now it really matches because the lines are going both in the same direction. I always have the option of this too. Wow. That really makes it pop. So what do I want? What I want this or this. There's even this yellow here. 
This is fabric that I dyed with Kool-Aid. <laughs> Mm -mm. So you can get a full view of what it looks like. It's gonna look like. Yeah, I think I like the red. It's, it's one of my favorite colors, so I'm gonna use the red because it really makes it pop. And then I could always use these lines here from the, from the fabric for something else. That I don't know. We'll see. So here we go with the red. Let's see how much of that do I want to use. Well, that's interesting because some of the yellow is showing up and it kind of matches these yellows. So I'm going to do it like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to snip this here to make sure I get what I want. And each page is going to show that little pop of color. Oh, look at my little ornate goodness here that I put is <laughs> showing through the window. Oh, that's okay, it adds interest. So there, another, so we, we sh showed you what you can use to strengthen your window and another way to strengthen your window is to simply um, use stitching around the edges but meanwhile I'm going to plop this down here I like how this little the little words here show up from there and so let's Let's gel that down. <laughs> One less. Oh man. Oh, I love. I'm gonna put it like that. I like it. I'm gonna dry off my paintbrush because I put it in the water. I like to squeeze the the water out on a napkin because otherwise my gel will be too watery. So gonna load this up with some gel and what did I say I was gonna do yep all right, so I'm going to put the rest of this uh, gel. Use a little more. It's a little harder to adhere fabric sometimes using gel. So I could use some fabric tack and I'll pull that out so you guys can see what it looks like. This stuff works pretty well for gluing fabric to paper or fabric to fabric. And I'm just gonna pull that back a little. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, let's see, choices. That's a happy accident. Let's see what it looks like. See, it doesn't even show, but to this page, it does add a little interest. Let me see if I... Yeah. I'm having a hard time deciding. But I'm going to do it anyway. How fortuitous that this didn't glue down so that I could do this. Let's see, I'm just going to use a little tiny bit. This stuff works pretty well.
and it's quick drying. Which works really well. And if this comes unglued, I'll just add more underneath that. That is so cool. I really love it. So I got my lines here. I got my lines there. It's just lovely. I'm happy. Let me just give it a little. And I see a face there too. That might be something I could bring out in another video. So, I think I covered everything. Oh, that turned out really cool. This little piece glued back like that. Let's get this little. Yeah, that turned out really cool. I really like it. I'm very happy with it. Oh, yeah, a little pop of red. It's the color easiest seen to the naked eye because the vibration of red is much slower than the colors that pre that go after, you know, the blues and the um, the purples. The, the, those all have higher vibrations. As you go up the color wheel, the reds to the blues are... So, I think I covered everything I said. <laughs> yeah, that is really cool. I think I covered everything I told you I was going to do in this video. So, let's see how this is doing. Not bad. It works. But I'll still leave that in there. And I'm thinking, wow, we're going to use this on. Well, I really like that. Let's do some more. Let's see what else happens. I think it actually melts better. And this from the gray side? Yeah, it does. Let's check it out. Mmm. Different. The gray side is better. Mmm. It's a lot of trash, a lot of hot. Alright. I don't want to do too much because I don't know if that's going to... This pudding... Wow, that turned out pretty cool. Well, there you go. There's something for you to play with. <laughs> I'm going to play with it. The idea of being able to get the Mylar to do this. There's a lot of stuff you can do with Mylar. So, we've covered everything, I think. That's just really cool. I really like it. So, yeah. You know, maybe I'll do a little bonus here. Just for shiggles, I'm going to lay some gesso over the top. Gesso is the great equalizer. You can bring something back to ground zero with gesso. Or just knock back some of the color. See how that really tones it down? And that's just a little bit of gesso. Now I wonder if I want to do the whole thing or leave this all messy. Well, we can try that on another page because I really like painting the gesso down. This is really... I just really like coat. And there we go.
don't know. This is really wet. And I think that I can use a um, water-soluble pencil on that. Okay, so it's still wet. So what if I went in there and my water saw it? This is a Stabilo. I don't know if you can see that. It's a Stabilo pencil and it's a water, water soluble. It reacts with water. So maybe I want to keep some of those uh, lines in there. I can go back over it and I'm doing it right now while the gesso is almost dry. It's dry. It's wet enough that I can it's my pencil is reacting with the wetness. Mm. Mm. I'll leave it like that. I like these marks. Okay, I'm gonna just leave it like that. It's wet still, so I'm gonna see if I can get a mark from that. I'm thinking. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, look at that. So now it looks like a fence, so maybe I can go back in and, uh, you know, bring out more detail. Yeah, this almost could look like a, a landscape. So I'm going to leave you with that. Um, if you like my ch channel, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And um, if you are interested in taking any more classes from me. I'm putting together my school at the moment. So if you subscribe uh, to my, well, you've subscribed to my channel, but um, go to my website and sign up for the newsletter. I will put my website at the end of this video. So thanks a lot for watching.